Yo, what's going on guys? Gonna be showing the power of Nocturne Jungle. He's not the most meta right now, but with the right build and runes, you can still easily carry your games. Free runes, take lethal tempo, triumph the lacquer de coup de grace, eyeball collection, ultimate hunter with attack speed 80 and armor. What's been causing him to struggle is a lot of people are still playing him with lethality builds, which simply doesn't work very well after the durability changes. A couple patches back, everyone got extra HP, armor, and magic resist. So trying to burst people down with electrocute or dark harvest nocturne or hellblades nocturne with lethality builds like i said just isn't that strong so instead we're going to be building more of a shredder style build which is frankly awesome on nocturne because of the way his passive interacts with auto attacking and on top of that you get an 80 bonus from your q which is awesome and you get a taxi bonus from your w so free 80 plus a bunch of free attack speed works quite well with shredder style builds for our build we're going to be rushing down bork into stride breaker after that it is extremely situational. You can get things like GA, Black Cleaver, Death Stance, Ma, uh, Kempunk Chain Sword. The two core items are the Bork into Stride Break. And honestly, you don't have to go Stride Break, but it feels a lot nicer because Bork gives you a slow and Stride Breaker gives you a slow, so they work quite well together. Level two, get W because your W gives you heaps of attack speed constantly, 30% at level one. You generally max your W last because per level it doesn't give very much. It only goes up by 5%, which is practically nothing for an attack speed steroid. Attack speed steroids generally go up 10 to 30% per level. So having it at 5% is kind of weak. And your E per level does get a lot of damage too. It goes up by 45, which is on the higher end of the spectrum. Most abilities damage goes up by 20 to 40 per level. So 45 is pretty sweet. We're gonna go ahead, pick up our E, and continue into our full clear. Every time you auto attack, it puts your passive on a shorter cooldown, then you do your big spin move and you get the heal and do some AoE shredding. Very nice. I'm gonna try to fear him towards the bush and fight on top of our black trail. Get that extra AD. If you're not on the trail, you don't get the extra AD. 2080 is quite a lot. That's two free long swords. Nocturne's kit's actually kind of overloaded if you think about it. Every ability does a few different things. That is a trait of newer style champions who every ability does several different things, which makes it extremely hard to balance them. The only thing that keeps Nocturne balanced is his general lack of mobility if his R is on cooldown, which of course the ultimate hunter comes into play there. We have Karthus top. That's kind of lame. Finished at 325, same as the Master Yi, full HP, still have double refill. Uh, we'll just reset from here. Or we could try to gank the vein. I'm not really feeling it though. Well, I guess Nidalee is bot side. Looks like she cleared top to bot, so this is fine. I didn't want to get pinched by the Nid vein when they have top prio. And have an immobile laner to follow me up. She's dead. The Karthus exhaust is actually going to ruin her. She figured she couldn't get away because of our E. Feels bad for her. Karthus should be able to push that without me. I want to get this real quick. Don't mind if I do. Looks like Nidalee did a full clear into the bot gang. She has maximum CS. We can look for the reset here. Staying to push the wave wouldn't have been a bad play. Because Evain would have lost more minions. I wonder if she's even going to lose that cannon minion. Yeah, it looks like she's not even going to lose cannon. We'll pick up recurve bow plus boots. Doing pretty solid. Full clear in the gank is your standard play style on Nocturne. Until you have your R, things get a lot spicier than your invades are better. You can gank pretty much any lane, no matter what. Oh, nice. Yasuo dies for it. Still a decent trade, one for one in the gank. Not excited about Vagar getting gold, though. It's kind of oof. Don't want him getting big. We should be able to snipe him down in team fights. walk through his cage with our W on. Balling isn't that gankable. Right as I say that, Pike goes in. We'll see if they stay. 
They stay all gank. Yeah, they're not staying. Dang. Oh, I figured that might happen. Callista was low mana. We'll just get R. I don't want to do this piddle patty thing back and forth. Looks like Pike just got down a fairly deep ward as well. Teammate should be fine. Callista no mana, even if she has a gold advantage. Callista without mana doesn't have much kill potential. Most of her damage comes from uh, her E. And using Q as an auto reset. She doesn't have enough mana to use any ability right now. We'll just time this with the Karthus. He's on his way top right now. By the time we finish this, he'll be ready. I'll save it for my passive. There we go. Very close to six. Vayne hit it before us. It's the state of top lane right at the moment. Top and mid. They hit level six. Like six minute mark pretty much as a jungler. You hit it before seven minute 30 typically. Need to get behind her. This could be warded. She's acting kind of weird. Nidalee's bot side we will look to take some camps. Maybe find a level six here. Karthus is a top and mid is actually pretty strong as long as you don't get ganked. If you get ganked, he doesn't have many options to survive. No speed ups, no dashes, and no actual hard CC. He does have an AoE slow, but that alone only does so much if your opponents have a dash in their kit and go right through it. All right, we got our level six. We can look for the gank here. They're too far away. We'll take Gromp and then we'll look for it. Karthus gave him an R. Oh yeah, trying to force Dragon, that's rough. After the Dragon HP buffs, it's not the best idea to try to solo those as a jungler early. I don't have vision of Pike. Meow. All right, we got his flash, not too bad. We have two stacks of Ultimate Hunter off the Vayne and Nidalee. Try to get it on the other people now. Just like I said, with trying not to solo dragons too early, you never really want to try to do it pre-6 on any jungler because you'll put yourself behind on your ultimate power spike. Since we are 6 and our R is on cooldown, now would be an okay time to do it. You can also block a dragon auto with your W, which also gives you extra attack speed. It doubles the bonus. Oh, it's worded. We can't do it now. It's too dangerous. Sivir's low health. They know we're on it. My R is on cooldown and we're sitting on a bunch of gold. Thinking we'd stay for the Bork. If we full clear here and then gank with our R, we'll easily have enough gold for Bork. Also resetting when all your camps are up and you're already there to start the clear is not the best. I would have done it if we could afford Bork, but since we can't, there's no point. Don't force ganks on Nocturne if your camps are up and if your R is on cooldown. It's a really bad combination. We'll just run away from you. Your Q is not that great of a speed up. Your big speed up in your kit is your E. After you fear them, 90% bonus movement speed. That's game breaking. That is the biggest movement speed bonus in all of League of Legends. it will be hard pressed to find a, a single movement speed bonus bigger than 90%. It doesn't exist as far as I know. Karthus is taking my camp, that's really annoying. He just cost me Bork. Doesn't even realize it. Can we solo Vayne? If we had Ignite, maybe. She's full HP though, she's level eight. Ah, that's rough, man. Is she gonna use her dash? All right, she's dead. We land our Q on her, into the blue smite. Down she goes. We had our Lethal Temple full stacked, which is around 80% bonus attack speed. Uh, yeah, 75%. Spicy. Go for the Emax second because the damage, fear duration, and cooldown gets lower. Your, your E gets a lot per level. If they buffed his W to give 10% extra attack speed per level, his W max second might be worth, but as is, eh, not really. Reset for the Bork for your boot options on Nocturne. 
plated mercs and lucids are fine lucids have fallen out of favor a bit since lethality nocturnes not that viable right now so generally it's going to be plated or mercs you don't need berserks you just need some survivability because once you get your lethal temple full stack the goal is to stay alive so you can keep shredding oh that was so close pike almost landed a big r there got the cutoff on Callista. she has tier 2 boots advantage but we do have blue smite She's really lucky my R is on a cooldown. My R wasn't on cooldown, we'd absolutely destroy her. We're gonna hold on to our E just in case Nid's in the area. Oracle's right as we're passing the bush, use the back end of the Oracle's to see so we can extend our duration with it effectively. All right, we'll start dragging. I think Clist is backing, Pike's dead. We heal quite a bit with the Bork too. You can do this with full HP. Probably not even worth using our W, just in case someone else shows up. Wow, that was super healthy. She gets the Herald. The Herald is a little bit better, pre-14 minute mark, especially since they can get plates with it. If they don't get plates, it doesn't matter. We're gonna spell shield through the cage and kill him. I let the rock hit me so it wouldn't scrape my spell shield. Let me go ahead and try to leave some of these so we're not too BM. I was already there in my lethal tempo stack so it kind of just made sense to take them. I actually wasn't planning on finishing the last hit of my passive. Kind of scraped the whole thing. Her red's down, my R is up. And find something here. I'm hoping. There it is. We're gonna blue smiter. We do have Bork and we took well oh my god, we took so many turret shots. I thought I was out of turret range. We took over 1k damage from turrets. Clista's probably going to kill everyone. I stacked up her lethal tempo before she even went in on my teammates. That was a high risk play, not much reward in it. Luckily, Clista doesn't scale, so she's not going to be able to do too much with that gold. I can always focus her in a team fight. Look for the stride breaker now. It gives you a lot of tankiness. And the added slow lets you kill pretty much anyone you're able to get your hands on. After they come out of your fear... There's no point of using Stride Break if you know your fear is going to land. So you only use it after the fear ends or you use it to help yourself land the fear before they like break the range of it, essentially. Morgana doesn't have R. She's... Ooh, all right. She landed the Q. Big waste of my time, but I'm glad my teammate didn't die. R is on cooldown. We'll go ahead and push into Nid Jungle then. They're actually swinging back into this game right now. With the Herald mid lane. We still need Ultimate Hunter stack on Callista. Red buff should make this easy. There's no way he keeps running, right? There's no way. Hey, buddy. Gonna walk through that. Thank you very much. What a weird counter to Vigar. He can't cage you. It's hard to kite something out that can't be CC'd. Very similar to an Olaf, except you have hard CC. Olaf, that's his biggest weakness, honestly. Nocturne's Fear. Very nice ability to have. Where the fudge is she? She's in my jungle. Dang, I'm on the wrong side of the map now. I thought Nidalee was going to come back. She's not. R is ready to use as well. She'll lose this. She probably reset because she doesn't have a complete item yet. She most likely has the gold for that at this point. Even if she did buy Sork Shoes. We have to focus Callisto. She's too full item. It's kind of scary actually. Using your Q to get around the map is a little bit faster. Don't use it though if you're not gonna have it up for your next camp. 
Nice. I didn't think teammates were going to be able to pinch there. Down goes the Vigar. I have a feeling this is going to be a FF15 type of game. <laughs> if they FF15 or 20, we'll do a part two. It's such a smooth experience going for the Bork Rush on Nocturne. You can solo tanks, you can solo squishies, you can take dragons super easily from all the healing. It's not like going for a Lethality Dusk Blade or anything like that where you lose all your health. Well, this is exciting. I can't catch up to her. Hey, friend. Down she goes. You can even use activatable items in your Q and E in midair before you land. Doesn't make that much of a difference, but it sometimes it's just enough to change the outcome. Go ahead and go for dragon. They're in base. We have good vision. Vane's top side. If we can shred it down with Bork. Let's see. Also, should. Well, I guess he's not going to help. That's fine. I can still take it. We'll pull it out. Getting closer to our stride break. I don't want it back before I can afford it. Since I have some camps up, there's no point of resetting. I'll go ahead and block this attack to get the attack speed. Dragon autos are coded as abilities, so it's going to scrape off your Banshees or your Spell Shield. They did that because a long time ago, the old rework Pantheon, his passive would block dragon shots. And uh, because they were coded as autos originally, the Pantheon shield used to block turret shots and autos. So he could solo dragon literally at level two and it was kind of game breaking. So that's been in the game for such a long time. All because of the Pantheon level two dragon solo capability. That wouldn't even be possible anymore, even if they reverted it. It would take so long, it wouldn't be worth it at all. So freaking long with how tanky the dragons are now. It's not even worth it for Warwick to try to level 3, level 4, or even level 5 a dragon. It takes years by yourself. Hey, Vayne. Down she goes. We did have the Karthus R to help. She ended up, I believe, flashing my my E. She ended up breaking that fear. If we had Stride Breaker, we would have been able to close enough distance to where your E tether is longer than the circle to initially cast it. The tether is longer than the activation point. So if we had her Stride Stride Breaker slowed, she wouldn't have been able to get out of the the way with her flash. And that's it. They quit. I will see you guys in part two of Bork and the Stride Breaker Nocturne Jungle. Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to part two of Bork and the Stride Breaker Nocturne Jungle for some easy dubs. Up against an AP Shaco, that actually excites me. I think AP Shaco Jungle is uh, kind of like a four fun champ, not a four win champ. You can carry on it, but ultimately there's such strong AP options as junglers, whether it's Nunu, Zac, Diana. Honestly, I'd say even Evelyn would consistently eclipse AP Shaco jungle with that being said should be a fun game they have a Raka, so we're gonna have to focus her down perhaps even get some heal cut this game if our teammates refuse to we'll lay our ward off to the side make sure Shaco doesn't cheese us generally Shaco clear routes will involve double box wraps well technically three boxes on wraps one on the red buff not an active range so then he solos the wraps hops over fears it into the other box and then he does Krug, so he'll be level 3 off red side and gank or invade, one or the other. Luckily, Mordekaiser is a beefy boy. He should be fine. With that being said, we don't want to invade Shaco's top side, even though we could solo him, because it'll probably all be gone by then. Instead, we're going to just do the standard full clear. That's what Nocturne's all about. If you find yourself too deep in enemy territory, it's challenging to get away. And you don't necessarily have the tools this early in the game to secure the kill. Without R, Blue Smite, Bork Slow, or Stride Break Slow, it's not easy to actually finish what you started because they try their hardest to escape. Each Bork, Stride Break, and Blue Smite all allow you to stay on top or close the distance to begin with. To a degree. 
Kata and Yo. Not sure about that matchup. She started Dark Seal, though. That seems pretty greedy. Item is bad unless you get a kill. Hmm, she might actually. She might actually do it. Turn around for the passive hit. Yon lives. Shaco's hovering. He did double camp in the mid game because he was shoved up. I think he's going to regret that, though. That means most likely his Krugs are still up. And I can probably full clear top gank into Krugs reset and hit a really fast level 6. Very exciting. Down he goes. Ripperoni. Shaco hit level 3 just from leeching minions mid. What a way to do it. Nice. I was trying to hit the ground there too. Can apply a red buff burn jungle item burn to both of them plus our AoE passive. I was actually nervous Gromp would reset there. At least when it comes to Evelyn fear. Or Evelyn charm I should say. The Gromp resets really easily. We held on to smite because I saw Shaco was pathing bot side. Might as well save it for this scuttle and then we'll go into this guy's Krugs. No need to burn E when it's already that low in health. It wouldn't speed up the process at all. Botley needs to finish shoving that wave. Unless they're worried about, uh, I don't know, their wave's in a spot to get frozen on them. We could go take Shaco's Raptors right now. They'll be spawning in very soon. Yeah, they're, they're up right now, I think. Kind of worries me a little bit though, so. Jax is pretty deep under his turret. He's missing a lot of health. He's not going to look for anything crazy. Mord has his shield prepped. Jax isn't going to be able to do anything to him. All right, let's get our big chunk of Bork here. Grab a control word and head for our Krugs. Jinx scaling is really good. Soraka scaling is really good. Jax scaling. I think they do outscale us a little bit. Mainly the Soraka Pike difference. I think Soraka is way more useful late game than Pike. Their main issue, they don't have anyone to pill other than Shaco R. They don't have a true front line besides Shaco clone. Shaco clone is going to die really fast though. We're going to wait for uh, just the right time to jump on Soraka. We need to kill her super fast in fights. She doesn't have exhaust, so it should be easy as long as Jinx isn't close enough to exhaust us. I think exhaust is quite a bit better on Raka at the moment. Heck, I think double exhaust bot lane isn't even troll. Exhaust is just the best sum in the game. Running exhaust nocturne jungle is fine. I don't always do it though, because a lot of times they'll, you, you'll get cheese. They'll invade you level one. It's annoying crap. They're trying to abuse the fact that you don't have flash. But like I said, exhaust is fine and legitimate on nocturne. There's certain times where you wouldn't want it though. In certain type of champs. Where you have to dodge the skill shot or you'll die type of thing. Because you can't spell shield everything. If they're hitting you several abilities at once, you can't risk the main ability hitting you and getting you killed. So Flash can be quite useful for that. Even Ghost. Ghost works alright on Nocturne. Lots of mobility. It's great in team fights and multi-target fights for the extensions. We'll go in for Shaco's Krugs again. He's getting off more ganks than us, but we are getting more gold than he is. He's not actually getting any kills. It should be level 6 right here. We weren't technically on our thing there, so... I already know Jax is coming. I'm trying to get my... Uh, I'm literally trying to get my level 6. For those of you wondering why the heck I'm hitting the Krugs still. Level 6 is what I'm after. Got our W on. She probably can't see her teammates because of the fear. Or I should say because of our R shroud. I was trying to get 6 so I could R off to the Katarina as escape. Just couldn't seem to hit it. 
I don't really want to give this to Yon. There's really no point to let him have it. He gets less, less XP from it than I do. It is what it is. We'll leech the minions mid here, help him shove it a bit faster. We both get the majority of the total XP. And Twitch is by himself for a moment. He might build a gank bot. I'm not gonna fear it since we have smite. If you have smite, there's no need to fear it. They're backing off, so I'll go for wraps red into Krugs. We might, then we might be able to find a gank bot side. Twitch is pretty fed, so by no means do we need a gank bot. If anything, it's more for the ultimate hunter stacks to allow us to snowball. Our R's on a cooldown, no reason to try to force a gank right now. It's really important to meet your teammates on heavy farm style junglers like Nocturne, Evelyn, Karthus. They'll constantly want you to gank even when it doesn't make sense. They'll put you behind, which in turn will put them behind. Q is giving us 50 freaking AD, holy smokes. So we have 50 free AD from Q when we're on top of it, plus 30% constant attack speed bonus from W. Nocturne actually has loaded base stats. You just wouldn't be able to tell because it doesn't show up in the traditional sense. Like a Trindamir. Trindamir's base stats are literally giga high. Like his health regeneration, that type of thing. Our R is on cooldown, so this isn't the best situation. Kind of want to stay and get... Uh, My Bork and whatnot. Oh, this rock is dead. I'm just gonna flash out. I don't want to lose all my health. Might actually be able to kill these guys underneath this. Nah, it's not gonna pan. This is too tanky. She's landing Qs and it's healing her like crazy. If we try to stay, we'll all die for this. It's not worth it. I'm going to give up his blue buff. Kali could rotate from base. Instead, I'll stay on the map. We'll grab blue ground wolves, reset. We'll have Bork. And by the time we push out back onto the map, our R should be up. Giving us a huge window to carry. Shaco's so far behind in CS, man. He, he's out of this game. There's a certain point as a cheese jungler where your cheese and days are over. And that's for him. That's not good. Jax actually causes Nocturne some issues. He can block off your autos, which is your main source of damage. If you can bait out his stun and block it though, you can actually kind of solo him. Yeah, Kata just beat the fudge out of me. Random invade, she has a massive gold expenditure advantage. I was also missing some health. We both have recurve bow, but she also has like 850. 1300, 1650, plus 300. She's got a lot of gold. She has over 2k gold spent compared to my 800 or my 1000. But hey, we got our Bork now. I guess we didn't lose too much out of that. Wow, he still got it. He's gonna die for it though. Twitch poison is a great tool for knowing which one's the fake one and the real one. As long as he gets one auto off or one stack of poison, the uh, clone doesn't reflect the stacks. My E's on a cooldown. That's so frustrating. I shouldn't have put my E on a cooldown there. Oh well. It is what it is. Trying to R without E is pretty painful. I was going to go in for the cat, but she got healed up from a rock of R. Jacob could be going anywhere. Probably. Oh, we got a D. I think that's a rage quit, honestly. That would not surprise me at all. We can get some plates off this. Block its attack for the extra attack speed. Oh, cool, he's back. Maybe it's just like motel Wi-Fi. 
walking around with boots is kind of painful. <laughs> Good thing Nocturne has solid base movement speed, 345, not bad. Mm, come on, man. He loses turret from this. He probably realizes that too. We're not going to kill him, but we did get his turret. Good enough for me. I'll just walk away. No need, no reason to die for this. I don't have R. Cat is probably roaming. These guys have been roaming a lot this game. Looks like Jax. Jax didn't quite make it on that one. He didn't survive the Mord R. Our R is coming back up. We could look for something here. Our bot lane's getting dragon. First Herald pre-14 is more valuable than the first dragon because of the plates and first turret bonus gold. It's a massive swing. What's with people trying to... Let, let me have the red buff. <laughs> it seems like Ward was going to come take it. Later, Soraka. Walk across my path. Yeah, getting away from Cat is kind of annoying. She has a lot of items too. She has Sork Shoes in the Dark Sill. Yon is taking my red buff. This guy is so annoying. There's just no reason for it. He's stealing XP. His jungle item, he doesn't have jungle items, so he gets. Not as much XP from it. He's just slicing up my clear to where my camps are all spawning in miscellaneously. It's pretty annoying. Against their team, I'm actually thinking about the Merc Treads. They're fairly AP heavy. Wow, he gets the kill. We'll take full credit because he got our red buff. <laughs> We don't really have any KP. All we have is high CS and objectives. Almost seems like there's nobody to gank. Yeah, we see you, buddy. Well, I guess it doesn't matter. Now the Twitch DCs. Mm, Jinx isn't a full item. Can't really fight 1v2 bot side though. They could exhaust me. If she goes up for the turret, I'll do it. Decent amount of CS, don't mind if I do. Pivot back mid lane here. They're, they always seem to be hiding from me. They're both gone now. Now Cat is gone. No one wants to fight Nocturne. They must have went for Gromp or something. They disappeared for a weird amount of time. They didn't base either. This has to be warded, right? This has to be. If it's not, I think we actually kill here. Jinx is low mana. Yeah, it's obviously worded. They keep backing off. They're so lucky my R's on cooldown. Would absolutely destroy them. What are the odds of getting two separate DCs in the same game? Hopefully he comes back. He has a lot of the gold on our team. I don't want to have to babysit the bot wave. Nocturne needs to be prowling the map, pressuring with the R threat. I don't want to R Katarina, Soraka my R. Yeah, sure enough, there's Soraka. She's just hanging around. Is he taking my jungle? The wolves were gone. Yeah, this he owns a spaz. There's no reason to surrender. There's a high chance Twitch comes back. Especially since he's fed. Oh my god. 
what the Yon DC is obviously intentional. I don't think the Twitch one is though. Might be able to kill Katis still here. Got the blue smite on her. Down she goes. Sick. The Bork is just such a good power spike on Nocturne. There's nothing else that matches it on him. Bork Nocturne today is like Lethality Nocturne two years ago. The cream of the crop. Oh, man. Get a Heartbound Axe, even more mobility. We'll go for the Iron Spike Whip. Still missing two Ultimate Hunter stacks. We don't have really any ability haste. It's winnable 4v5, I think. So I can wipe Soraka really early in the fight and then turn on the rest of the team with my Lethal Tempo. As long as we don't randomly die to them. We're not fighting on top of our black mist there. It's a mistake. I'm going for the dragon. He's doing it while there's a control word right there. Impressive. I need to make sure to secure my red buffs. The Sion dies a lot, and there's a high chance he'll just take my red and then die with it. I can't have that. I need the red to stay on top of them anyways. Iron Spike Whip isn't that useful. It's only a little bit of damage. It's less than an auto attack, really. It's way less than an auto. Stride Break is what's nice because you actually get the slow from it. Now we can full clear up. All of our camps are up other than Blue Buff into Herald. And maybe get a pick on Jinx here as well. Twitch was really fed when he DC'd. He's actually not that fed anymore compared to Kata. Which is just as much items but higher levels than him. Plus 60, very nice. I don't want to go mid. I wanted the Herald, I was too late. Down you go, Soraka. That's exactly what I was talking about. She just can't deal with a champion like Nocturne. And a no skill gap close to get on top of her and slice him up. Soraka needs to be able to slow you and run away. It slows you and it speeds her up when she lands her Q, but you can spell shield that. And mid R, it's not like she can cancel your flying. I don't think anyone can cancel R in mid air. You can even cast your W in mid air too, so there's really no way to stop it. R is on a cooldown. We have the stride break though. Pretty nice gold lead on most of the players in the game, which is why we have a shutdown. All of our camps are down. Even though our R is down, we're going to push out onto the map since we have gold lead. There's nothing else for us anywhere else. Shago's going to walk into us. My sweeper's on cooldown, though. I have no clue where he went. The lines don't show properly. It's kind of buggy with uh, the Shaco to where even if he's on one side or the other, your E doesn't really show it properly. My R was up. We'd get him right there. We go take this wave since we're already over here. We have blue smite up. We have everything. They can't fight us. Their most fed players, Kata, and I have Merc Treads. It's gonna counter her Sorks really hard. Sorks only give 18 penetration. Merc Treads give 25 magic resist, so it more than covers it up. Hey friend. Thank you for the extra attack speed on my W, and down you go. I don't want to try to fight Jax, that's going to be annoying. 
You can jump away. You can also block our autos. I could actually kill her. I have lethal tempo stacked up here as well, so we're shredding. My goodness, that's a lot of damage. Jinx died, Soraka died, not bad. I think that was our first stride breaker usage. Super low cooldown, you can even use it while you're farming. Third item against their team, they're not tanky, so Black Cleaver wouldn't make sense. Wit's End would be okay. Titanic would be solid for the extra health and on-hit damage. I don't think we even need Kempunk Chainsword since we're focusing Soraka. She can't heal herself properly, only with her R, so... I think just Titanic. Or to actually just stole my thing there. We can go back at a Giant's Belt, team at while our R is on a cooldown, might as well. Will be properly built out for this dragon fight. Absolutely stacked up. We'll also get a Farsight Alteration. It'll be annoying not having Sweeper deal with Shaco, but he's not a real issue on their team. It's the Jax and Katarina and Soraka. Soraka's dead. We'll get Dragon Soul and then we win the game. We have so much CS. We have one of the highest in the games. We stuck with the full clear into ganks. Sadly, the most of the early game, there was no ganks to be had at the end of the full clear. Hey, Soraka. Got our blue smite on him, and down he goes. A flash for it. It's worth. Especially going over her traps with the flash all in one stroke. Guaranteed kill. We can't end here, but we can at least take double inhib. We'll fight on top of our cloud. And we are out of here. We'll get dragon here as well. Can't believe we actually had someone on our team trying to FF. Such a free win, man. They don't have the comp. We have more to front line and low key Yone is a front line or two since he can pull in and out of fights. And Pike kind of. We have two and a half frontliners. They don't have like any. Jax isn't a real frontliner. He's a, a half a front line. AP Shaco's half. They just don't have much. Who's gonna stop stop us from getting to Soraka? No one. Thinking about orange jinx there. I didn't know who else happened to be there though. Felt kind of risky. Just trying to find the Soraka. I'm dead. Yeah, that sucks. That wasn't really worth it. <laughs> we gave Jinx a thousand gold and all we got was Sorak out of it. Jax had a solid rotation. He got there really really fast. Now that we have Titanic, I'm tempted to get more HP style items. Dead Man's wouldn't be terrible. Sorolda's wouldn't be terrible either. Be really nice for killing the Jinx. Tough call. Perhaps we should go for the hill cut. Kempunk Chainsword does give a lot of stats. 55 AD is pretty high. 250 health isn't terrible. 25 ability haste. All right, we'll do it. Even though hill cut's been way over nerfed. Self healing has been such an issue for League in the past few seasons. And then they nerfed hill cut. It doesn't make sense. Hill cut is an extremely necessary part of the game. Without it, there's just no way to kill certain champs. I think that's GG's. That is it. 
Wow, if you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to hack the algorithm. My name is Kingsticks, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.